Hey everybody, back again. Going to be doing um, Vulture Man today. Let's get a little more light on that. There we go. Um, going to paste it over to the page real quick so everybody knows what's going on. And then we are going to knock this out. Okay. There we go. Cool deal. All right. There we go. Got it pasted, and we're going to go. All right. Sorry about that. Now I'm going to get this going. This is going to be Vulture Man from the Thundercats. Um, sorry I'm running a little behind. I uh, got hung up with a project with a client. He had to talk to me for a few minutes, and the call ran over. But, um, yep. Now I'm putting in this firm line right here uh, with this joint because Vulture Man has this um, connecting tissue right here at the edge, and I just wanted to add that on, and that was the reason I went up that far. Because you don't get to see it, but, I mean, if it was a real creature... Um, vultures and buzzards have this connective tissue that goes around and normally people mistake it for that nasal cartilage that's right there connecting holding the beak to the skin which is fine but this is an additional piece it works kind of like a um, um, an octopus type of uh, beak where it's got that cartilage uh, that hangs on you know that rubbery cartilage that hangs on to the tissue and I wanted it to have that kind of um, that feel and that look because I wanted it to play off of the real bird. So that's how I went with it. And it's, you know, it's hard to do this in a realistic human form because end up, you end up making it look strange um, any way you try. And, I mean, it either looks like something out of Jim Hansen Studios or um, The Dark Crystal. You know, if you've if you've ever seen that film, um, which they're making a prequel to, as to how the world fell, basically, um, it's got that kind of puppet look. And, I mean, I don't want it to have that kind of a look. I want it to have a realistic bird look, so that's why I did it this way. But um, the last couple of drawings that I've done since the Mumra piece, it's a little bit different, you know, um, this character is the smartest of, which is hard to say because <laughs> with a straight face, but um, he is the smartest of the mutants from Plundar. And, I mean, he's actually their scientist and weapons designer. And that's part of what makes him such a, a strange character is the, the intelligence, but yet the natural look and action of the character makes him look like a moron when he, you know, he doesn't have any combat skills is the problem. He, he's tactically a scientist, not, uh, not necessarily a warrior, which busts me up to no end because of the fact that he's puts himself in this, these situations where he's always um, having to fight. And in the new version, the uh, reboot, they have him more as a, um, more as a warrior and his species is more technologically savvy but not quite the same way um, it's a very very cool character I, I really dig him he's one of my favorite villains on the series and now that I've taken uh, Matthew Blake's recommendation and uh, watched part of the new one I'm not so uh, so against it, I like it for what it is. Um, it's not the Thundercats that I grew up with, and no, but <coughs> excuse me, it's not the uh, it's not the mess that I thought it was. I mean, it's not like you know Fox's Fantastic Four, um, which just has been you know that that reboot was a great film, but it's not the Fantastic Four that I know. I mean, if they'd have called it anything else, it would have been a really good movie. Um, and I, I got the DVD. It's it's just 
Uh, I waited for it to come out and go on sale, so I didn't have to worry about wasting the the 15 bucks on the tickets and hearing you know the family complain and whatnot. While I uh, purchased it at I think it was Target for five bucks, five ninety nine, which is kind of sad, but because um, I really like the the acting cast, but I did not like that. Um, I just didn't like the presentation of the film at all. Um, it, it like I said, I've watched it once. It is good for what it was, but um, you know, if they labeled it anything else, I'd have probably liked it. If they'd have labeled it Fantastic Four, you know. Ultimates or something like that, it would have been fine as well. But anyway, it's Fox. What do you expect? You know, they've got the X franchise and they're making it with that. So whatever works. But anyway, and the original Fantastic Four movies weren't that bad. I've said that numerous times on many podcasts and many shows and whatnot. And, you know, whenever I'm asked about it, I really dug the first two films. Um, just enjoyed the heck out of those and still do i watch them again and again on occasion whenever i want to watch something you know and i just haven't seen anything in a while i'll pull them out of the the dvd cabinet and go for it of course i have a massive collection because i don't that's one of my vices i collect a lot of dvds and they're not worth anything to anybody but me because of the movies that i watch but it is what it is. So I got asked some uh, some time back about the films that I watch. I, I watch a lot of obscure films. Um, the Private Eyes with Don Knotts and you know uh, Tim Conway. Um, <clears throat> there, there's a film from the '90s called Big Man on Campus, which was hilarious. It was about a punchback in college. Um, I have uh, Secret of My Success is one of my favorite movies. Michael J. Fox, love that film. Cracks me up to no end. And um, that basically was the generation of the time that was their social network. You know, um, it played off into that type of feel. It was an underdog film uh, for Michael J. Fox's character making to the, making it to the top of the company uh, that he was working in, and. Uh, it was pretty cool, but uh, not to mention the fact that it was hilarious. But it's mature comedy, though. It's not for kids. But uh, then I have all the mainstream stuff. You know, the box office stuff is definitely a given. But... I was watching a little a little cable this morning, which I don't watch a lot. Um, just once in a while and late at night when I'm trying to go to sleep, you know, wear out and go to sleep. Um, it cracks me up. I was watching uh, Dog the Bounty Hunter this morning. I was watching it in passing. And um, if you ever notice, compare Leland, his son, um, to... Samuel, um, Sam Worthington's character in the uh, Avatar. And the Avatars kind of look like him. It's funny. Um, the Na'vi look actu actually look like him. I wonder if somebody based that, you know, James Cameron, if he based it off of them, uh, off of uh, Leland. That would be funny. But, uh, yeah, they do a lot of great work. Um, outside of bounty hunting, they do a lot of charities and stuff, and um, yeah, that's pretty cool. They get a lot of hard rap because they're on reality TV or war at least at one point. But you know, um, back to the the Thundercat series, I, you know, I, I really enjoyed it. I I've been digging this uh, this reboot. Um, I'm only a couple episodes in. I haven't seen a lot of it. But it's it's interesting. I'll say that it's definitely worth a watch if you're if you're an animation person and you like you know unique cartoons. Check it out. It's it's something to uh, pose a pretty good option for an escape if you want to watch something you know that you kind of recognize but need something different and, uh, to spark and be new about. It's pretty cool. So thanks for that recommendation, Matt. I appreciate it. 
because I've been hesitating on that. I just didn't give it a chance. And, you know, it's not bad. It's really not. So it's rare for me to actually accept something like that because I'm a purist, as I've been called many times by many people. I like to... <laughs> I like to stick with what I know, and I don't like to mess it around very much. Um, it's one of those things, if you come at me with a revamp or something, it's more uh, probable that I'm going to reject it rather than, you know, embrace it right away. But it's kind of ironic. It's not hypocritical because I'm okay with new care. I'm okay with characters growing, but I'm not okay with characters being changed just for sake of changing them. That's what I'm saying. So, you know, understand that because like I said, I'm not being hypocritical in any way about it. I understand characters have to evolve and they have to move on and whatnot and they can't last for, you know, 120 years down the line with the same character being in place. Batman's pushing his limit where it's not practical because he doesn't meet the mindset of what's going on anymore in society and he hasn't kept up with that chain and I think that's where the Batman series falls short is that they're not um, evolving into modern things because I, I don't know anybody that would come in and <clears throat> not be social media savvy and aware and be dreading that you know Bruce Wayne should be all over social media by now so should um, you know, so should Daredevil. And I understand the press is one thing in the Marvel Universe, and that's still a big thing because that's when it was set up, which was newspapers and stuff. But with social media, we need to get our comic books into that and get our characters to where they're more savvy from that. Now, um, as a side note here, these feathers, I, I set these primary zones, okay? But I'm also going to be using them as, as hard feathers because... Mixed into these feathers are these um, softer down type of longer, thinner, almost hair-like feathers that vultures have, and they it's a it's a protection to keep them from being attacked while they're on the ground if they hit anything, and it's also to keep them insulated from the cold up in high spaces. So, you know, if you see these, that's why I'm doing it this way rather than the solid bunches that most people would do. And they'd be like, well, that's not feathers. Well, on him it is because that's what they actually had. Hey, Noel, glad you made it, man. Brian, good to see you pop on, bud. I'm glad you guys didn't get swept away, man. <laughs> I know those storms got nasty down there, down your way. Stuff started floating down the streets, cars and stuff. Pretty wild, man. Pretty wild. But as for these feathers and things, I'm going to start popping in um, a couple of these right in here. And like I said, they're just these long squiggle bits. They're not really even feathers. They're just almost a hair type of um, thing. And I, I wouldn't even go as far as to say down because, you know, like on a duck, they're not really down feathers um, and they don't have that look and feel I mean I've been at the zoo I've seen these feathers on the ground and um, I, I've checked them out you know for reference and stuff and and it's just they are they feel like coarse hard feathers but they're just really um, really really fine to the touch so that's why they look like that but um, anyway Scribble some details here on the edge, kind of etch in a couple of things and make it pop up a little bit. Try not to make it look too shiny. We want it to look organic, not shiny. So no loop lights here. Gonna cut this shadow in underneath this jaw here. To make it come up. Cause it's Vulture Man. He's got that dark base on his skull, you know, that super dark brown around here. 
I'm going to do kind of the what I call the venom highlight as it were I made a loop there when I split my lead just now that's what that was it fractured um, that happens sometimes <clears throat> pretty cool pretty cool now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this now his head goes down on his neck really strange um, there's this tilt piece of flesh and then it goes back behind for the jaw <clears throat> into the cranium which is strange but whatever um, that that's just vulture man it's that's a weird dude um, I'm gonna segment this part off and it'll make it look like that that dark jaw down underneath and I'll get those eyelids in just a second because they are a dark part as well. I don't want them to pop out just a little bit. <clears throat> yeah, this dude's creepy. He's not quite as nasty looking as Mumra, but he looks like he'd be, be the mad scientist of the group and he'd like do experiments on you or something. Just a weird guy. So, I'm going to cut in the rest of this here. <clears throat> I'm going to keep the top just kind of undershadowed right here under this ridge. And I'm going to keep it pretty simple and pretty light. And I'm not going to go super dark with the top one. But now... And I add some details in here for uh, thick skin kind of thing and a little bit of uh, ridging and ribbing and whatnot. Kind of give it some texture. Make it look a little fleshy, for lack of a better word. <clears throat> okay, bear with me here. Do something about my scratchy throat. Here we go. Now, he doesn't have eyebrows. If you ever draw him, he has these funky ridges on his eyes. But he does it above his eyes. He has his heavy brow. But he doesn't have eyebrows. Be careful not to draw those in because it will make him look weird. Because <clears throat> as you can see in my, underla my underlay, I made that ridge right there. But I almost did my typical eyebrow thing. And it will make him look stupid. I mean, it may work in your design, it just didn't work in mine. So give it a shot if you think you can. <clears throat> Gonna grab a drink here. <clears throat> They've had me on the phone all morning. Even when I was working and drawing, uh, clients have been calling me because it's the middle of the month, you know, and they uh, want to make sure everything's going cool. And I had some consulting things going on. Looking at the camera to make sure you guys are all in shot. I'm going to put a little bit of a ridge right here. He doesn't really have this. But I'm going to add it because I think it makes it kind of a musculature thing. Right there to where that, that curves. There, there's the highlight side. And then there's the face of it, and it gives it kind of a ridge um, off of this that your mind will extrapolate just a little bit better like that. So, <clears throat> I like it. Now, this is that funky dome hair thing that he has going around the back of his head. Uh, made him kind of look like an, uh, an old man. In a lot of shots, like this is a, his hair going around, kind of a Patrick Stewart type of thing. Um, just going to put in a little bit of detail here, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to kick it up too much. I'm just going to do a little feathering to give that some shape and show it's a different section of the head. 
because this is kind of a beige blonde type of a wrap around his head that uh, some vultures actually do have. add that in so, so we have some texture for that and I think we're good I'm gonna add one or two more details here and then I'm gonna leave it alone because I want to have this come about pretty solid and like I said I don't like to overwork them it's not my style but I do want him to pop up just a little. And I think that allows it to do so. A little mark down here. Alonzo, if you're watching this, man, um, starting to get your way with the cross hatching and the feathering there. Want to add just a little bit. Of uh, texture to this like I said though that makes it pop just a little bit more fulfills it a little bit for the uh, black and white look of things a lot of people have noticed some changes in my artwork and they say that you know, you're starting to render things a little bit better, and it's just like, no, I'm adding a little more to it, but that's about it. I don't want to go crazy. I don't want to get into a uh, expected realistic, you know, semi-realistic type of look. I want to keep my stuff open. Very open, very clean, very simple. <clears throat> but I have up my game a little bit. I openly admit that I have opened my game a little to some of the harsher bold blacks and things like that. Now I'm not going to go in and feather any of these details out and start putting in heavy shadows into that because it will wash it out real quick. Uh, where you think it would give it detail, it would actually over-render it and it would black, cause big black spots in it and make it look weird. Um, or make it have heavy clumped spots. And I don't want it to look clumped, I want it to look free-flowing. So that's the way we're going to leave it right there. But um, I'm going to catch right off the end of this nose here and curl that up just a little bit so it looks a little more folded under. Like he has a little more of a connection there a thicker side and uh, I think we're gonna call that done I like it so I appreciate you guys I hope you dig it um, this is vulture man from the Thundercats hope that looks cool hope you guys have had a good time with it um, here is uh, monkey in and there is slide from the other day <clears throat> so you guys can see these bad boys coming along pretty good they make a decent set so with that said thank you very much for hanging out with me today I appreciate it as always uh, I'm gonna get to inking these right now as I am uh, waiting for some server updates to finish up so I can finish up some coding stuff that I have this afternoon and a comic page talk to you guys soon uh, tomorrow is going to be, da, 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 who do I have tomorrow? Um, 
Tomorrow, I have Pumara. Pumara will be tomorrow. So check you guys then. Take care till then. Talk to you later.